Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Clueless A Trading Frank sitting here on the lovely New Jersey, New York waterfront overlooking the Statue of Liberty and downtown World Financial Center, our home stomping grounds, the, the, the shining city on the hill, right? So there we go. Um, today is uh, October 15, 2018, approximately 9.09 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Chinese markets are opening right now. Asian markets have opened. Australian markets have opened. And Asian markets are starting to open. Um, the session will be recorded and uploaded to the Clueless A Trading YouTube channel. For all newer members, keep in mind, as you have probably received the welcome email by now, instructions are there. You need to go on the YouTube channel and start to review the new member introductory playlist to get used to my style and what I do um, and uh, understand a lot of the basics of the terminology as well as how to read my charts, how to use them effectively, and of course use your own uh, uh, skills, skill set, and uh, try to maximize your uh, potential and your PNL, profit and loss. Um, so highly suggest that you do spend a little bit of time reviewing some of the more important videos on the new member intro playlist on Clueless 8 YouTube channel. Excellent videos on chart pattern analysis, um, and many other things on how to how to uh, read um, my uh, my particular style of tactical charts. Quick reminder, but important reminder, as I've always done, is uh, you we're missing a another new member, Nana. I love that, and Nana has not signed in yet. So let me just give her a quick shout out, Nana. Okay. Um, very important reminder, please. For we have started a brand new Instagram channel, Clue to Say Trading on Instagram. Even if you do not have Instagram, just create a channel and just follow us. It is primarily for promotional purposes, but we highlight a lot of the fantastic trades that we do. It is not a real-time content channel. It is simply there to, uh, for promotional purposes, to spread the word of what we do here at Clue to Say Trading. And it is very exciting and interesting, and I highly suggest that all of you follow us. We do need a higher follower count, which has been growing slowly but steadily. Like to accelerate that. We are approximately in 300 plus followers so far. Once we cross through 1,000, the algorithms on Facebook pick it up a lot quicker. I think about 500, they pick it up rather quickly. And uh, we've been getting some very positive response from many other professional traders who are on Instagram who have started following Clue to Save Trading and um, have uh, uh, said some very kind words um, uh, on, on, on uh, the things that I have, uh, content that I put out there. So please uh, kindly do that and spread the word to all your friends. It doesn't cost a single penny to follow us on Instagram and also on YouTube, and um, that would be highly appreciated. Okay, on that note, full disclosure, this is purely for financial education, not for any solicitation or advice, and let us begin. Just want to make sure that all of you have visual and audio connection, correct? Yes? yes, sir. Okay, DC, Mike, I know you do. And Serge, do you have audio and video visual connection? Perfect, sounds good. All right, so on that note, let me start off from the micro to the micro. Okay, the micro meaning the shorter term view, starting off with the 15 minute charts. I Somewhere in here, I have a five minute chart too, but uh, 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 structure, uh, I think this is the five minute one. No, it's not. This is the 15 minute one, two versions. Well, let me start off with the 15 minute one. Those are the primary ones that I look at. I only trade the five minute charts if I'm doing some very fast intraday trades on certain stocks and the indices, such as the SPX, the SPY, IWM, or QQQ. Uh, but aside from that, the five minute chart is really, especially in extreme volatility, like I said, is like MOC, that's monkey on crack. You never wanna see a monkey on crack, um, but we call it MOHTR, uh, and that's monkey on a hot tin roof. Uh, it becomes extremely, extremely jittery uh, and volatile if when one, one is trying to trade off the five minute charts, but some people have their own style that some of our members do, and I respect that. 
But I would say that if you're looking to set up trades and do it the right way, right way meaning do it in a way where you are not getting battered and uh, and uh, like uh, uh, in, in a battering ram because of the five minute candles moving up and down like crazy. This is a 15 minute chart and you can see the volatility, but at least you can decipher a structure. Because as you know, at Clueless A Trading, we believe in structural patterns. And uh, that's part of tech, a major technical analysis. That's one of our biggest strengths. So the five minute charts tend to be, get a very, very noisy, but certainly use it at your own will. But I'm going to start off with the 15 minute chart. So what we are seeing here since the crash, uh, which was uh, back on uh, uh, back on the 9th when we began, uh, that when we reached the up uh, top, I believe. No, the top was actually on. One second, I'm going to actually adjust this. 29.44, and I did call that. If you listen to my previous videos, uh, some of the newer members, you would be pretty amazed to know that we call those 29.44 type of E-minis. You're looking at it live, real-time futures chart because we use that primarily for a proxy for determining what um, the markets are going to do on the front end. We do have futures traders, and Serge, if you are a futures trader, you can certainly use my charts very, very effectively and using your own skill set. Um, and uh, and find it extremely beneficial. So saying all that, um, let me adjust this a little bit more right from the top, right there, and we can actually see a pattern. And once we can identify a pattern, it tends to make it a little bit easier, not that comforting because of the volatility in the market, but but it, I, in my opinion, it gives you a much better view of the roadmap and we can construct a particular trading model um, where we can trade it intraday, but also mostly on the swing setups and not get jittered around because we're looking at a one, three or five minute chart. Just want to be clear on that. And I think it's pretty simple and everyone can understand the basics of what I'm trying to say. So saying all that, um, so this is where we are. So we had a, uh, we, let me just put it out there. Perfect. There we go. There we go. Turning out to be great. All right. So what we are basically looking at as the market was trading in a downtrend channel, very tradable, and we, we did that. It was downtrending, but it was, again, this is on an intraday basis, and it looked like it was going to break out, but didn't do that. And then it, it came down here back on, on, on the 10th, on the 10th of October. And uh, then we had, uh, when we started to get this massive uh, waterfall decline, the big flash crash. So at this point in time, the best uh, one of the ways that I've constructed this particular chart, and then we're going to zoom in, is we are seeing a cup and handle pattern here. Here's your cup. Here's your handle. We broke out of the handle. And again, I want everyone to realize, especially the newer members like Serge, that this market, and I'm sure you have been around markets for a while or maybe even not for a while, the lesser time you have spent in the markets, the better off you will be, just so you understand that meaning that the lesser experience you've had with the markets, the better off you'll be able to understand it because you probably won't, probably won't have that much baggage because baggage can stymie and throw out your best laid plans uh, because you, you're part of your mental uh, uh, amygdala in your brain. I'm sure you guys know that word. Uh, is always screaming at you saying, I've been there before. I don't like it. I just want to get out. Um, and that uh, screws up uh, multiple uh, tactical trades that could have generated significant triple digit percentages on uh, short term options. So bottom line is that the lesser baggage you have, the better off you will do. So what we are looking at here uh, is a, a very structure. We, we call it structured volatility. And that is that we are looking at a despite all the volatility. Um, we are looking at a cup and handle pattern. Here's a cup, and in between the cup, there are inverted head and shoulders, and these are all basic technical patterns, uh, which, like I said, if somebody's not uh, used to those terms, please feel free to educate yourself by looking at some of my videos in the new member introductory category, as well as going on YouTube. There are phenomenal guys with one million hits. I wish I had some. Um, I'll get there. Um, with um, explaining the basics of technical, you know, technical patterns. So please, uh, I, I obviously I'm not I don't have the time right now, um, and those are done on my introductory sessions that I give two complimentary free training sessions for all new members. I explain all that stuff. So bottom line is in between this cup and cup and handle pattern, 
Uh, we are uh, we detect many other ones such as inverted head and shoulders. Here's your big head. Change the color of this thing. Make it blue. Here's your head. Big reversal hammer. Big powerful moves generating anywhere from 60 to 140, 150 percent intraday on each of these, you know, from the candle formations. Um, so it's the inverted head and shoulder with the head, a left shoulder, left shoulders, right shoulders, continuation pattern, little consolidation, then a breakdown, creates a double bottom. At that point, you can draw a line that I did, the blue line. And, uh, and then we have a uptrend line in place, right? That That is an uptrend line. Here's your other uptrend line. And so this pattern, just the way it looks like, is like a megaphone. Doesn't mean that it's going to go all the way up to the megaphone, but I have showed repeatedly many, many, many times over the years since I started to display my work uh, on a more systematic, uh, 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 um, detailed basis since I started my service at Clueless A Trading that megaphone patterns do work. They do work. And megaphones, if you look at this one, basically I am pushing that max upside. If things go just fall into place, a little bit of chatting and handshaking with China Premier Xi, being a little bit nicer to the Canadians, um, uh, and, and, uh, and, and all kinds of other stuff, a lot of my predictions have come right, such as the pastor Branson being released from Turkey. Emerging markets are going to cite have already started to um, sigh a, uh, uh, breathe a sigh of relief. Emerging market currencies will show accordingly over the next couple of days. Turkey sanctions are going to be lifted. And uh, and obviously, you're going to see that economy start to, start to bubble up again, which will have a contagion positive effect across the board globally, period, especially in emerging market countries. Because that was the first time when we sanctioned Turkey because they arrested the pastor and put him in jail or would not release the pastor. Um, Donald, uh, President Trump went ahead and went hard, I mean real hard, and slapped sanctions on Turkey, which caused their economy to falter and the lira to just completely collapse. And that had a contagion effect across the board in all emerging markets, from Brazil to Argentina to South Africa to, uh, to, to uh, Brazil, you name it. So bottom line is that has now been relieved to a large degree. Saying all that, and that was part of the reason, too, why our markets faltered. You know, when EM started to fall, we started to suck in the money, but then we started to get a little bit jittery. So saying all that, um, at this point in time, without spending too much time here, max, if every, of, of some, a perfect storm appears where some of these things line up, remember in life and in trading, nothing is perfect. If you think there's a perfect solution to all, all of life's problems, then you're living in some la-la land that I would love to live in. There is no perfect solution to any problem. So the same thing in global macro finance, same thing in stock markets. We just need a semblance of something going right and the markets react big time. Okay, that's it. Any type of rumor, any type of practicality of, of, of business relationships with the global partners, markets just jump. There is no solution. Just remember that. So it's time to get out of that stupid notion in your head that it has to be fixed. No, it just has to be in the process of getting fixed. That's all. And the markets will react accordingly. So if something like that happens, you're going to see a very sharp move. Of course, it's going to be one of those zigzag moves. Nothing is in a linear fashion, uh, a straight line fashion. But we could very well get down to the in, the second or the I would say the initial part of the big crash that was 2850. 2850 from 2656 is a large number. This is where we closed at today. Well, where we are right now at 2757. So 2757 down to the downtrend line or the upper channel is 2850. That's 93 S&P points or E-mini points multiplied by roughly six. You're talking a 560 point move on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Anyone who says that cannot happen has no frigging idea what they're talking about. Just the way anyone thinks that we can drop 1800 points in a go in two days has no idea what they can talk about. The machines are getting faster and faster and faster. The algorithmic high frequency trading program, the black boxes are artificial intelligence, the AI machines, and they move faster and faster and faster. Sometimes they move so fast, they don't even know what the heck they're doing. And it's a fact. I have friends still 
on Wall Street and other places who write these codes. And they can't even figure out what the hell their machines programs did. That's just the nature of AI. All right. So that's the same thing with markets. This was a big technical move. I asked people repeatedly to read Marko Kalanovich's article. He is one of the best quant analysts out there. He called the VIX collapse in February. He's calling that this particular VIX, uh, the, uh, 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 VIX induced as well as uh, uh, market induced technical bond parity increase and all that stuff. The big bond sell off and the yields rising and such. The worst is uh, behind us and we should be able to move up from here. Read that article if you want to educate yourself a little bit. I, you know, and Marka Kalanovich is not somebody who comes out and shows his face too much. Brilliant guy. Brilliant guy. So, saying all that, I don't want to ramble on. So, this is what we'd be looking at a 600 or 560 point move up to with the Dow up here. And that would be a pretty phenomenal move, but it can happen within two days. Okay? So, but in the meantime, we know exactly what the resistances are and everything uh, by looking simply at the fact, by just simply looking at the, I had the arrow here, I don't know where it disappeared, because entering the channel at around 2800, and believe me, we went to 2800, just you guys tend to, all of you tend to forget, because people, uh, traders, especially retail traders, have very selective memory, they almost have amnesia, they can't remember what, what really happened two weeks ago, and that's the next question I'm going to ask. Uh, or not next question, but one of the questions I'm going to ask um, is we hit that actually on the 11th at 9.45 a.m. where we scalped some pretty significant profits from the initial drop on the 10th of October and this was the 11th of October at 9.45 a.m. We did hit 2,800 and we are going to hit 2,800 again. Okay? And that's going to be formidable resistance because if you know uh, getting into uh, getting into this type of channel is not something that happens that easily there was a huge that we lost uh, 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 close to um, uh, I think between one and two trillion dollars on the stock market or at least a trillion dollars I don't have the exact number in my head within days so you know it's not something to joke about so coming back to the basics cop handle broke out came back and retested that handle and now futures are up roughly eight points, and we're probably going to open up right here. Each of these charts are designed for you to know exactly what the markets are going to do, and I can assure you, based on my track record and experience, and please, you can look that by valid, you validate my comments by simply looking at my charts on Twitter feed, as well as previous webinars, that each of these of the lines, both the supports, the resistances, have been engaged repeatedly, repeatedly. I am not the type of person, and I'm sure most of you are not the type of person to panic or, you know, what they say, uh, 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 fight or flight. I like fight to win. I don't like flight to go to the nearest Walgreens and grab adult diapers. Okay, that's me. Doesn't matter whether I'm getting hit or not. And fighting means that you look for selective areas where you can make up the money or try to make up the money at least and these type of volatile markets give you enough chances to make that money up as long as you do the setup here was the afternoon from 245 down boom 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 they brought it down now they're going to bring it up so what difference does it make if you didn't buy here what difference does it make i, I mean uh, it makes a big difference when you panic and you sell you're not watching these levels all it was doing was coming back to the lower end of the level to create a 15 minute reset right here, resets of the stochastics of the internals. And then right after hours, futures are up eight and a quarter and you're gonna see it rising as we continue with this webinar and get up to 2779 most probably. Actually, I highly doubt it. the futures are gonna be up 20 points by the time we finish the webinar, but we'll probably land up there tomorrow morning if overseas markets cooperate. So did it make any sense to you that you, when, what things you bought here that you sold out in a state of panic? Because you're putting tight stop losses on frigging volatile options, I think that's madness. All right, next topic, next chart. The 15 minute chart again in a more cleaner version. You can see what's going on here. Not going to repeat the same thing because it's pretty much the same uh, story here. This should not be in red, they should actually be in green. 
that's an optimistic scenario. 2800, 2820. This is where I expect the market to go by the end of this week. My job is to forecast based on probability game theory, based on everything that I. This is really funny. I, I'm, I'm talking. My Siri went off on one of my iPhones, and Siri saying, "I understand, but I'm not sure I understand." I said, That's great. <laughs> I must have said, "Hey Siri," somewhere. Um, okay. So bottom line is, let's move on to the one-hour chart. Now the one-hour chart is cleaner, lesser candles because it's a one-hour chart. Each of the candles are one hour. You can trade. Anyone can trade this chart, by the way, or at least try to keep a semblance of sanity. I want to make something very clear to all my members. I am not in the business of converting you into some sort of robotic technical trader. My job is to be to stick to my convictions of what has worked for me for many years. Worked for me overall in a large way for many years. I am not going to be I, I am not going to go out there. I might be strong on my convictions. I've always been like that. But I am not going to go ahead and try to change your mind that you want to trade one three minute charts and you think that's going to be that that's going to be where it determines your overall account growth. If that works for you, great. I doubt if it works for you because if it does, that means you are some sort of genius because you are playing the five minute volatility to see what will happen over the next 48 to 72 hours. Just doesn't make any numerical sense. But hey, if it works for you, God bless you. Now, if somebody's a day trader, five minute, 15 minute, 30 minute, and one hour charts, even 15 minute charts work fine. I am setting up more swings than day trading. As you can see, I am not going to day trade 50 points on the Dow, especially of these levels. You have to take into account the, the conditions we're in right now. We are in extreme oversold conditions as I move along these charts to the daily, the weekly. I have shown it repeatedly, and I'll, I'll show it to you again tonight. So at these levels, with multiple, multiple indicators at literally major crisis levels, I have a hard time swinging short. Swinging short. Intraday, you can scalp. If you want, you can scalp. You know, of course you can. But I don't want to uh, use my mental energy, and I only have three brain cells left. Um, it's a joke, but still. I have, three, I have three brain cells left, um, and I don't want to utilize too much of my mental energy in trying to scalp every every five minutes or 15 minutes. It's really as simple as that. I hope people understand. So saying all that, look at look at this particular chart. You're seeing a far more defined, a defined cup and handle. And by the way, these large red candles, we have played good portions of those, not necessarily from the top because we don't know whether it's going to turn exactly here, but from these levels. And we have done it on multiple days. You guys all know that. We have generated, I think, what was it? Last week, one of the days was a Thursday where we generated uh, um, close to, they went from a buck 60 to almost $6. Can't beat that. More than $6. In fact, the next day they went higher. But those are intraday scalps on the short side. So saying all this, this is where we are right now. We could slip to 2727. Sure, it can happen, but we see a structure. And that structure is basically telling us, telling me at least based on the basic, basic full stochastics. Forget the McClellan, forget looking at the, at the uh, 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 what do you call it? Um, the Arun or the ADX or the MACD. Just looking at the pure stochastics, the easiest on the eye, easiest on the eye that we are that we are moving higher what is moving higher me we're just going to jettison all the way up here because a lot of traders even to this day even though i keep on preaching hard they don't seem to change their mind that there are no perfect moments i don't know what perfect moment they're waiting for when the perfect moment comes and goes they're not there to be seen so i don't know what they're exactly waiting for but anyway good for them you know maybe the invisible hand of god will show them okay this is the time you put your whole, you know, fortune into the market and you'll come out ahead. There are no perfect moments. They're just algorithmic moves and high probability trades. So bottom line is that um, at this point, 
we're going to find resistance 2700 20 i mean sorry 2799 2800 on the minis that's roughly about 2804 on the s&p 500 and then if we can break out over that then we have a major level to contend with that's around 2827 which is roughly around 2830 to 2831 on the s&p 500 and you can see that's the that's where the second leg of the breakdown started which we shorted very nicely the other day last week right there red arrow red arrow if it breaks somebody might say why do you have a blue arrow over this well i say to themselves it's common sense but i do realize that a lot of people lack common sense so i will explain it very clearly the the blue arrow simply means that if we're going to break if we break out over this and this and the selling is is absorbed then we are going to basically go higher and that higher level will basically take us to into this zone because it, a, uh, the second leg of the large short squeeze will materialize and it will be a fast blast and pattern symmetry dictates that this pattern that we fell in is the same pattern that we're going to rise in now i don't make these things up because i've just seen it happen way too many times and i've said it again and surge and these new people will find out i'm no technical genius i understand all of the nuances what i think i'm very good at is pattern recognition just the way behavioral pattern recognition in the market, behavioral pattern recognition by retail investors, maybe because of all my years on Wall Street, I really got around to understanding how people think. That's why it's so much so easier for, easy for me to understand how many of you are thinking. It's like a poker game. Around the table, I can figure out the guys who are really scared, the guys who are kind of scared. Guys who are just so terrified, they're just, you know, running to Walgreens and Walmart to buy diapers every two minutes. And then I know the guys who are selectively buying the setups, taking a couple of hits, making nice, decent money on the big up days, making up their nice losses, doing some setups, but trying to be as rational, calm-headed, non-emotional. I read you guys well overall. I'm sure some of you guys fool me with, you know, understanding, but overall, I understand you guys very well. So, saying all that, uh, the point is that at this point, this is the trading range that we're trading in. This, you can clearly see that, and that's what my charts are designed to do, just to show you the visual roadmap. So it's, and you can see here, there's nothing random about the moves here. It's all structured. If it breaks 27.46, it's going to fall. That's why I have the red arrow here. I have the blue arrow here, means that if this range breaks, breaks, up, breaks out, the 28.27, with some power, because this is the range that we are basically traveling in right now, 2746, 2827. Well, we haven't gotten to 2827, what am I talking about? Let's say 27, uh, this is the range we're actually traveling, this box here. So what I'm trying to achieve by doing these webinars and showing you guys all this stuff, I want you guys, not want you, do what you need to do, but I'm encouraging all of you to think very mechanically, think in visual, tactical terms don't always look at a price don't always just look at a price falling and saying okay that's it it's end of the world and then miss out on a 30 point gap open it's happened way too many times now why do why am i leaning by a uh, uh, more bullish at this point because i wasn't leaning that bullish believe me and you can listen to my webinars up at that 2950 2860 level I was leaning bullish, but not like I was telling people to take profits as quickly as possible. I wasn't telling people to go out there and short like crazy because shorts haven't worked overall. If shorts had worked overall, many of you guys would be making half a million dollars a month. Even the shorts in the market are not up a lot for the year. In fact, they're mostly underwater in the market, even though the market has corrected 1,600 to 2,000 points. So think about that for a minute. So bottom line is what I'm encouraging all of you to do is to look at things in a very mechanical, chart-oriented, tactical way. Some of you will are better at, at it than others, but that's just life. Not everyone's created equal in the sense of looking at technical patterns. But I will warn you, if you keep on chasing prices up and down, you will suffer. No question about it. Because the volatility movements in the market, and I live and breathe this, that's what I do for a living, right? And I have 14 screens staring at me, flickering numbers and charts. They are so fast, so quick. How can you trade that quickly? You can. 
And if he gets swayed around because they're spoofing and the algo spoof, they lie, they fake, fake orders and all that stuff, moving things around. Google up twenty, uh, Google up nine, then they drop it, drop it down. A big sell program comes in, they drop it down seven. What does it mean? It's not going to rise again within the next 15, 20 minutes. It's up eight again. So price chasing on itself is not something that is kind of recommended. But do what you guys need to do. Okay, so this is where we are. Overall, to me, it is looking constructive. Anything can change. It's a very volatile, dangerous market. Anything can change. But the, a very good amount of the risk premium in the market has been accounted for. And that's the reason why we are still stuck in this range and not here. Okay, so bottom line is use your own style, do what you need to do. But all I'm simply doing is showing what I show. So this is your one hour chart and don't get freaked out. You get the big red candle coming in like, oh my God, it's all over. All he's going to do, he's going to do this again or do this again. Till at one point, it's just going to do this and you won't be around. That is the sto real story of most, you know, retail emotional traders. You guys know that. So I always have this, some sort of setup. And by time, October 19th, October 26th, going to November. The big stock buyback start in November after earnings. So buy time. I suggest certain strike prices based on the, the price of the premiums, um, the elasticity of delta and the gamma of those options. That's why I say, okay, October 19, monthly OPEX, generally a bullish event. Let's try to look at those. Let's try to look at October 26. But you don't have to exactly abide by those. You can go out and pay more to buy some more time premium, which is fantastic. Going into November, it's up to you. I'm looking at the time premium. I am looking at the cost effectiveness of buying those options. And I don't like it buying way out because the markets are so volatile. I don't know what's going to happen way out. So I like to keep it reasonably close to the vest. It doesn't mean you have to buy the same weeks. I always like to give myself a week to two weeks because a heck of a lot happens within one to two weeks these days. Then, then, then you know what would normally take months now happens in hours and days. You guys all know that. So saying all that, let's take a look at this here. This is the picture which keeps guys in the game or not in the game. Okay. I'm going to ask a simple question. I don't need answers because I know the answers. And here's the question. When markets collapsed back in Fe January, in, 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 in late January, early February, when markets collapsed back in late March, when markets double dipped again in late April, in early May, an honest question. Number one, did you guys really capitalize on it? My answer is no, because I deal with retail traders. They are my members. Most of you, majority of you, never capitalized on these moves. Never. You didn't. If I ask, second question, if I ask people to remember exactly during this period what happened, how volatile the market was, and if I ask them without showing these charts, I can assure you with full honesty, because we're not in the fake news business here at Clueless Aid Trading, that none of you remember, or very few of you remember. If I asked you what happened back in June, very few of you will remember. So the point that I'm trying to make here, it's called recency bias. And I've mentioned this before on my, on my videos. Recency bias means what is happening in the immediate moment is what you are so engaged and enthralled with that you completely forget the bigger picture of how much money you could have made of these type of tactical bottoms. I repeat, how much money you could have made of these massive tactical bottoms throughout the multi-day volatility and the end outcome of big, fat, fat, fat rallies. There has been one instance 
of these type of tactical bottoms where the markets haven't risen sharply. And I'm not talking about testing old highs. I'm not even talking going there. But just for the markets to go from here to here is almost 1,000% or 600% or 400% on the SPY, SPX, and the other indices called. Forget about individual stocks that move with the market. Some of them have higher ROI percentages. So if you truly ask yourself, this is a behavioral finance question, behavioral game theory. That if you can't remember what happened in these massive circumstances, which were some of the biggest, biggest money-making opportunities. I'm not even going back like years. I'm going to, this is 2018 I'm covering, guys. Give me one second. If you all can't even remember how to trade these type of tactical bottoms, what the playbook was, then how, then why are you questioning? Well, it's okay to question, I guess. Um, why are you doubting every single move that's happening, which is exactly the same thing that happened here? Here, here, and here. And in smaller cases here, where there were two-day drops, three-day drops, five-day drops. What is so different this time? If I went head-to-head -head over a glass, glass, couple of glasses of uh, uh, red wine or some nice chilled, you know, beer, on somebody trying to convince me what really changed in the world, I can bet your butt that you would absolutely I'd beat you to a pulp on, on that argument on factual basis, not on like fake news, emotional garbage. What really changed? Interest rates went up a little bit and then stabilized. Donald Trump is uh, going to be impeached. You know, give me some more political garbage. Um, Rates are just going to move higher so fast, it's going to break the U.S. economy. The world is just falling apart. The trade war is going to be so ugly that the Chinese economy is going to completely collapse and we're going to be hurt. Um, tell me something I don't know. So ask yourself these questions. These are all questions that go through my head when I'm modeling a particular way before I'm saying things. Because I don't like to talk bullshit. I like to put out my opinion, right or wrong. They've been right a lot of the times. That's why I still am where I am. So, honestly speaking, nothing really changed. I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty of every single thing that made this collapse happen, which is similar to this, by the way, which is very similar to this. And there were multi days of volatility, which could have, which could have been traded not easily, but could have been traded very nicely on the one hour charts and the four hour charts. And we have also shown that. And then the market just took off. So I leave it to the Marco Kalanovich article that I will retweet again. And if you guys don't read it, that means you really have no desire to make any money. Honestly, it is phenomenal. It talks about risk parity. It talks about the VIX, you know, what, what really happened. It's all technical that happened. Emerging markets happened, bond prices shot, uh, collapsed hard as yields shot through the roof. I explained in my previous videos, the speed and the velocity of the yields rising caused massive, massive multi-billion dollars. They said one point, I, I heard on Bloomberg, $1.1 trillion of bond market losses. $1.1 trillion. You don't think they got to come up with a good portion of that money to cover their margin calls? What do you think they come up with that money from? From thin air? From Mars? They come up with by selling stocks. There is a minor revaluation in stocks. High growth companies got a little bit of their PE squash. But nothing really changed. So if you, anyone can really convince me in a really solid reason, factual reason, please. Not some garbage you read on the internet. As to what really changed, I'll listen to it. I probably won't disagree with you. So that's it. So the key is, Ask yourself the question whether you made any real money of these moves. And I'm, the market is offering you, in my opinion, another opportunity to make that real money again. But for that, you will need some very strict discipline. The good news is that very few traders have real discipline. That's the reason why traders who have discipline make a lot of money. Traders generally have no discipline. They're monkey on cracks, right? That's my new term. They're monkey on hot tin roofs. They want to jump in and out, jump in and out, jump in and out, jump in and out. That's fine. My best days, my best weeks have been 
when I'm set up right and these things happen. And I just sit there, buy, buy, sell a bit along the way. And a lot of the times, I'll be honest with you, I've said this before, I have not held on to my own convictions towards the end. I'm posted out of fear and then I see another 300 point move up. Even though I have minor, minor positions running. I do not want to do that again. I am never going to sell at the top because I don't know exactly what the top is. Yeah, my charts can tell you what the exact tops are. And I've shown you guys that many, many times. But I certainly know how to buy the bottoms. End of story. All right. Now, simplest way to look at it is to forget the chart pattern up here. Look at underlying stochastic and train your eyes to look at these moves. Train your eyes. Just look at them. All right. And you start to see how similar. Deep, 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 extreme oversold stows. This is on the daily. This is not on the one hour. This is not on the five minute, 15 minute. This is on the daily. It takes a bunch of days. Bunch of days. But as long as they are start, as long as the trajectory is like that, doesn't matter what the volatility. Do you think there wasn't volatility here? Didn't, didn't, do you think I didn't hear the same old comments that I hear every day in the chat room? Nervous traders, it's okay to be nervous, but use that nervous energy to think logically. High time. Some of you made some real money. So the real money comes when things get really cheap. A lot of things are really cheap. And a lot of things are still working like fantastic. I give you stocks that are up 20, 30% a day. Or 50 plus percent a day in many cases, especially the small cap spec stocks. So what? I gave it to you guys. Whether it be years from the 1st of October, from the 10th of October. Sorry, made primarily from the 1st of October. Stocks up a gazillion percent. 73% today. I gave it to you guys at 45 cents. It's at a buck 80. It's like 300, 400% in two weeks. I could just rest my laurels on that and say, guys, take a walk. Stop complaining. I gave you something that went up for, you know, literally. It's not even an option. It's a stock. That's priced like an option. I keep on telling people to buy NBEV. Well, you know, love the company. I've never had one of their drinks. I like the chart pattern. Go buy this freaking thing at six bucks and it's up 22% in one day. I gave it originally when I gave it to you guys was 375, 380. It went to 10 and a half dollars in a day. I'm sorry, in two days. 10 and a half dollars where we sold it. So that's just the way it is, guys. All right. So looking at this pattern here, this zigzag pattern, it's going to be zigzag just like that. And then boom, it's going to go. So for that boom to occur, you need to be set up here. So if you're trading every one in three minutes, you will never, ever, ever, ever catch these. Guaranteed. That thing I'm going to guarantee. Now along the way, can it slip and slide and retest 2700 again? Sure it can. Sure it can. Can do that as early as tomorrow. Goldman Sachs comes out and stuff, but Goldman Sachs is not really running the market. But still, sure it can. But the charts are there to see. The ultimate buy was this massive reversal candle off the downtrend channel, which I projected the night before or two days before that. Listen to my webinar. The hammer reversal retest of the 2018 major downtrend line. What's so hard to do? And then the market went up 600 points from here, from the top to bottom. So today we did this. Now, according to actual technical analysis, this was an inside day. This was an inside day. Why? Because the body of this candle was encompassed, was, in, uh, was still within the body of the previous day's move. The previous day being Friday. So it's okay. Now the bears will say, overall, um, bears might say, hey, this looks like a descending triangle. I say no. A descending triangle looks like this. This is more of a consolidation triangle or flag. Now it is on the lower end of the flag. I do admit that. So it's still a bear flag, mind you. It is still a bear flag. But by the time it's not a bear flag and it breaks out, you're going to be paying a lot more higher prices for those spy SPX calls and whatever you want to buy to play the long side. You'll pay, you'll pay a lot more. 
So I would rather buy a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here, trade it if it's up 600, 700 points. We did. We had Apple go up 600 points on the Friday lottos. We had multiple things that were up 150 to 200 per, uh, percent from Thursday's lows when the market collapsed 568 points. I don't think any of you, well, some of you did, I know, bought that 568 point low. I know I told people to buy it selectively because the next morning they were rewarded big when the markets opened up 34 S&P points, as uh, E-mini handles. But of course, traders have selective memories and some of them are a little slimy and they don't want to remember it because they were not in it, so they won't talk about it. That's okay, that's life. So what I'm getting at is the price movements of volatility are so extreme. Don't let the prices just dictate it. Keep on looking at the charts. There's nothing happened today which was anything wrong. This is still trending higher. So what's the big deal? Buying some and staying long. But maybe some of you are a lot smarter than me. I'm sure many of you are. And you know exactly how to play the short-term 5, 15-minute charts and know exactly what's going to happen the day after. Well, I ain't that smart, guys. So I rather stick to the ones without uh, too much noise, and that's the daily charts and the one hour and the four hour charts and such. So without going into it too much and boring you guys, this is looking pretty friggin' damn good. And I'll stick to my conviction. This is 2018, this big lovely thumb. Okay? This is 2018. And this is where we are. As long as this is cooperating higher, I will keep on buying the dips selectively. If it starts to completely collapse that means something is really rotten out there if it completely collapse again and doesn't even create a double bottom but keeps on sliding down it can happen then i then you don't want to be then you, we obviously are going to short pretty hard but given where we are right now you have to go with past references that's it now let's look at further charts okay um this is your chart of the S&P 500. That was your chart of the E-mini daily. Showing you where we are right now. This little blip here, this little blip is 10 and a half S&P points. This little green blip here, guys, 10 and a half S&P points. The market opened up here. Then those lovely calls that we trade, the S&P 2800s, 2780s, the SPY 280s, the SPY 278s will open up 40, 50% higher. Just this little blip here. Forget about this. This is when you get those triples. Sleep with the candles, guys. Light the candles. Sleep with them, okay? Because this is, you don't need to look at anything. We get a lot of great information from people. We have um, MB here who provides some fantastic information, which she utilizes in tandem with my charts to trade her uh, own style. And that's fantastic. But... What I'm saying is that if you don't have the time to look at all those block trades and numbers and such, which a lot of people don't, and I don't want to look at level two because things move so fast, the bottom line is that I can see them on my charts. The candles are telling me the money's flowing in and out. And this is just one of my platforms that I use, as you know. My Think or Swim platform, my Quad Algo HFT platform, show these money flowing back and forth a lot faster. Okay, let's take a look at the S&P 500. The S&P 500 is, oops, sorry. This is your S&P 500, okay? This is what it did today. It pulled, you know, it went up. It was creating a, a nice uh, hammer reversal like this, like uh, like uh, Friday. And this is from 2018, right? Each one, it was a cup and handle. This was a cup and a handle till it broke. Are we going to give all the gains back of 2018? Sure, anything can happen. But at least I have my roadmap to tell me what if it breaks. If the market breaks 2744, I'm going to short all the way down to 2700. That's it. It's not rocket science. We've done that. You can see here that there was a big hammer reversal of the downtrend line. Look how different this looks than the E-minis. This is what the E-mini looks like. It looks a lot more sexier, this hammer moving higher. Yes or no? A lot more tail and, uh, and, 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 and the body. So longer the tail, basically you have longer the short covering. That doesn't show up that well on the S&P 500. I give more credence and, 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 and priority to the E-minis because that's where the money's flowing in and out the fastest in the futures market. 
So this could come down. We closed at 27.50, 0.79. If things go, you know, we could wake up tomorrow morning at 27.43 for all we know. Even though futures are up 11 and a half points really means nothing right now. That could all be swept out by the time European markets open. It's a lot of stuff going on. But at least I know what's going on. But so far, I'm a okay with it because this body, this ugly red body of, of a candle is still, these two candles are still within this great body, which tells me higher. As long as the stochastics keep on trending higher. Same stuff happened here. If you kept on buying as the stove started to climb higher through this volatility, you were rich. I mean rich. And none of you made it rich during any of these times. So, to be really blunt, like my good friend Donald style, you know nothing. So your opinions mean nothing. Because what you, did, what you didn't do around here is a testament to the fact that you know nothing and I know nothing. At least I admit I know nothing and I follow my charts and my dictates on, on the discipline of technical trading and my other knowledge about the overall markets and political game theory and such to apply. But overall, we know nothing. Respect the charts. And neither do, the, do the, the, the block buyers and the sellers. They know nothing. What do you think? They're that smart? You think every dark pool guy is a smart cookie? If that was the case, why isn't every hedge fund up 30% for the year, beating the crap out of the market, which is only up a few percentage points for the year? Ever ask yourself that question? If those dark pool guys were that smart, those block traders, why the heck are they not delivering 20 30% on their portfolios? And why are they underperforming the market by hundreds of basis points or or multiple percentage points. Ever ask yourself that question? It's good to have that info, but it's not good to just trade off that info. Billion, a, a 15, $30 billion hedge fund is down 6% for the year. How? They're trading in the dark pools. They're running algos right, left, and center. How are they down? 90% of hedge funds are still down for the year. So ask yourself a question. They're running the dark pools. Goldman Sachs and their, and their boys are running all over the place. But why are they still underperforming the overall indices, the basic indices, the naked indices, the SPX, the, uh, uh, the, the, and the rest of the indices? Why did they out completely underperforming the average market indices if they are that smart with their dark pool and block trades? I don't think I have to say anything. I rest my case. This is where we are with the weekly chart. Now, let me get into this here. This is the weekly chart. This, is, this excites me. This excites me. This is not a five-minute chart. This is not a 15-minute chart. This is not a one-hour chart. It's not a four-hour chart. It's not a daily chart. It's a weekly chart. And what excites me about this weekly chart is we are finally starting to see some semblance of a bottom right there. I'm a visual trader. When weeklies bottom, you get massive, trip, uh, not triple digit. Yeah, triple digit rallies over a matter of days. You could get 1,000 points on the Dow, three, uh, you know, 50, 60, 100 points, 150 points on the S&P 500 in a matter of days. Once the weekly starts turning. Now, a lot of the turns start happening middle of the night with the futures, as we know that. So if we don't have any setups in these type of zones, when the best of the retail emotional traders, MOCs, monkeys on cracks, and monkey on a hot tin roof, those are, you know, that's my old term, monkey on crack is my newest term, um, are all sitting there deliberating on perfect setups, this is already happening. So this is exciting to me. So whether it's tomorrow or the day after, I know that within the next, I would say just, uh, partly this week, but going into the end of the month, going into the first part of November, we are going to see the weekly stoves turn. Now, if they don't turn, then there's something really rotten inside. And we want to be, we want to, at that point, be intermediate short. But that we'll have yet to see. Because even in a bear market, which none of you really have a memory of, honestly speaking, there are massive, in fact, bear markets, 
if we, let's say, are falling into a real bear market, you get the most vicious, vicious rallies ever. And that's a fact. You can make a lot of money off those. But what can I say? Right there. It's bottoming. Now, weekly charts take longer to bottom. We know that. This is the third week of the decline. Let's do a week count, ladies and gentlemen. We have, well, this week was down two. So we actually, fourth week of decline. One, two, three. This is the start of the fourth week. When was the last time we saw four weeks in a row that the S&P 500 was down? Can anyone show me one? Going back to, going back to 2017. Going back to the elections, let's see. Let me go back. Now we're talking facts here, okay? So let's stick to that. So this was 2016. In a straight line, we have not, in recent memory, I'm just going back and back and back. Okay, let's see, 2013, forget that. Let's just stick here. Let's stick to 2016. All right, good enough for everyone? Let's stick to 2016. We have not. This was one, two, three, and the fourth week. This was 2016, November, the elections, obviously. Obviously, the election. This was the only time that I can detect, and on the fourth week, we turned hard. We have not been down four weeks in a row, as far as we, our eyes can detect, going all the way back years and years. So what, something's going to be different this year? I highly doubt it. Can we slip and slide to 2750? I'm sorry, we're at 2750. Can we slip and slide and retest the downtrend line again, which we did right there? Absolutely. But you can bet your butt and your money, all right, that you're going to get one vicious pull up, pull up, pull up. It has to happen. That's just technical, guys. I just showed you. We haven't seen. Even in the most vicious circumstances in February, things were bad stuff then. Okay? We had two weeks down. One, two, three. A little pull up on the third week. Fourth week, we, we had a doji down. Fourth week, we started moving up. Just the you know, just a fact, something truthful. Now, let's take a much more bigger view. This is the monthly chart. This is a chart that I've shown you guys many times. I call this the fifth wave, right? This is going back to the depths of 2009. None of you remember what happened in 2009, trust me. Does anyone remember the date that the markets, and please don't Google and cheat, just quickly, the date the markets bottomed in 2009? Does anyone remember? March. That's not a date. That's a month. It was March 9th. March 9th. Exactly. March 9, 2009. You're right. Does anyone remember what S&P went to? into went devil's number, triple six. My clients, some of my clients, sold out like they were just like, they were just, they wouldn't even, you know, listen. You're talking big, big clients. Sold everything out. Things which are up now 1,000, 2,000 percent. Individual stocks, the Amazons, the Apples. How, how idiotic. Just pathetic. So why do you think I am the way I am? Why do I think I sometimes just go head to head with people who get like too dogmatic? Because I've seen it. None of you were in the, to, to managed money. Maybe some of you did. You don't know how money thinks. Don't know how people panic. I know. Okay, enough of that. The bottom line is that we are right now testing this acceleration channel of this big acceleration that began in 2016. That is your acceleration channel, okay? You generally do get a correction after wave five. This is wave one, two, three, four, five. This was the longest wave. So now we have the correction. Now, technically speaking, this is a much longer view, right? This is a much longer view. That's why I think that short-term 
intermediate term, that top that we saw in the market, it's over. Unless something really falls in place, we're not going above what I had projected we would go to, which is that 2950 level, 2950 or so on the S&P, right? What was the high on the S&P, the closing high? The closing high on the S&P was 2949. I'm sorry, 20, uh, uh, 2940, 90, uh, 21, 2941. That was a closing high. But the, but the intraday high was 28, 2942. Doesn't matter. What I'm saying is this weekly chart, this monthly chart is telling us that the markets should test, wants to test the 2600 level. Okay, the 2628. That's another 130 points from where we closed at today, multiplied by roughly six. The markets do want to go down another 800 points. But this is a monthly chart. And the markets can go down another 780 points, but the markets don't ge generally. I'm just giving you the higher probability move. The markets has a, a, a very uh, sorry low probability that it's going to drop another 800 points right here to retest the mid Bollinger. Remember, all the lines, all the Bollingers are still climbing higher. We are still in a bull market, even if we drop another 800 points on the Dow. It's still trending higher. None of these lines, use, just use your eyes that God has given you, okay? Don't listen to me, just use your eyes. None of these lines whatsoever have, are turning down. None of them. They're all still moving higher. Now, short term, this is, this is the longer term view. Longer term, the markets most might even go to 2300. But I'm just showing you that the mid Bollinger can, there's another 780 points from where we are right now. I doubt if we get that in one shot. But saying all that, it can happen within a day. We saw markets down 923 points in one day on a complete technical breakdown of multiple, multiple, massive, massive stops being triggered. Read Kalanovich's article. Billions, you know, bond market collapses price wise. Obviously, that's going to that's have a massive reverberation on the stock side. That's the reason why the markets did what they did. So, saying all that, we are right now testing the bottom end of the uh, of the channel. So that's what I'm talking about. That quick reversal bounce, which should take us up towards the 2800, 2820 level. End of story. Is it an acceleration channel because of the slope? Yeah, it's an acceleration channel because of the slope. Yeah, good question, but you know, that's common sense, Serge. Yes, it's an acceleration channel because of the slope, because of the angle of the slope. Yeah, the angle. Things are moving along, things are moving along. And that's called a Donald rally, okay? Boom. And then the market goes off on a 45 degree angle. That is the Trump effect. Great business friendly regulations. Business is just, oh, cash repatriation, you name it, tax cuts. I mean, it was just a whole bunch of things. No one's talking about the fact that all that cash that the companies generated through tax cuts and repatriation of the thing as if they just disappeared. That's why the buybacks continue. Companies know when their stocks are reasonably cheap and they issue buybacks. All right, that's it, guys. So that's the whole picture. Um, in the meantime, Oh, I uh, didn't. I didn't show you guys this, and I hope tonight was helpful to you guys because, honestly speaking, I'm showing you history, and I'm asking you a simple question, and I am going to ask you that question again, every single time that the market slipped well below the 150-day moving average, well below, and retested the 200-day moving average. You guys thought exactly the same way. The media said exactly the same thing. None of you bothered. To really look at what was happening underneath the surface none of you some of you did because you were with my service but overall meant very few of you ever participated in this huge moves that's why i highlighted these areas this is no different this time guys and if you can convince me with factual economic reasons why it's different this time my hat's off to you i will listen and that challenge remains. I give it to everybody. Convince me why sometimes it's totally different this time. Why this reflex bounce will not happen. 
in, uh, one can say, and what some uh, Kalanovic and other people have mentioned, that this time it could be faster and more stronger. Why? Because the standard deviation from the 50-day and the 30-day moving average is very large. This is, this is probably a minus six. That's like you're following the highways and you're just way off the highways. You're landing up somewhere in a little village in, 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 in the South Pole or something. So you want to get back on the highway. That's known as mean reversion. So just mean reversion play up somewhere here. Or even kissing the under underbelly of the downtrending. This is starting to downtrend. That's the worrisome sign on a monthly basis. The downtrending 50-day moving average is 100 points higher, 120 points higher. That means it's 720 points on the Dow. Just to kiss the back end of the low uh, of the 50-day moving average. That's where real money is made, guys. Now you mix it up with your day trading a little bit. But you gotta have some swing setups. Because none of you did this. None of you. I'm sure some of you did. I doubt it. It's no different this time. Will this cross over? High probability it will. Higher probability it will. Now, saying all that, I'm gonna show you two things in which are which are gonna blow your mind. This is your McClellan oscillator. Remember the McClellan oscillator? Now, this is the definition of the McLaren oscillator. I want you guys to read that before you go to bed, all right? So you can make more money in your lives, in trading at least. I'm sure, some many of you are making a heck of a lot more money in your actual business, but um, talking about the business of trading. Say something here about the McLaren oscillator, okay? Just the general definition and all that stuff. I'm not here to read this to you. This is not your bedtime story, okay? So bottom line is one of the things they talk about is right here. Let me get the highlighter. Adversely, when the McLaren oscillator is below zero, shows that declining prices are outpacing advances and the securities price is generally moving lower. Detecting this movement at the early stages can signal profits from selling. So that's when the McLaren oscillator is breaking down. Technical analysts also watch for troughs in the trend line. Troughs after a lower trending McLaren oscillator. And please, this is not kindergarten, this is sixth grade. So listen carefully. Troughs after a lower trending McClellan oscillator can be a signal of a bullish reversal, which would show the trend line increasing again towards zero. Everyone got that so far? I'm not going to ask you guys to repeat it. All right. Troughs after a lower trending McClellan oscillator can be a signal of a bullish reversal, which would show the trend line increasing again towards zero. So watch this. And this is what I've been talking about. I want you to read that definition to you guys so you guys can actually understand a little bit more. Where's my McClellan? What happened to my McClellan? Disappeared? Oops. Oh, it was right there next to it. I am such an idiot. Okay. So. When the McLaren oscillator went to 118, you had the opportunity of a lifetime to make crap loads of money. And this was back in February. 99.9999% of retail traders never did. When the McLaren oscillator went to 66, minus 66, back in early March, same story. None of you did. And correct me if I'm wrong. McLaren oscillator minus 44 in June, big reversal. Some of you did. Now the McClellan oscillator went to 97. Negative frigging 97. And you're telling me to frigging short the market? Sorry, guys. I'm not that crazy yet. I'm really not that crazy yet. Can you short for a couple of minutes? Half an hour? 15 minutes? An hour during the day? Sure you can. But think about it for a minute here. You don't have setups. Every morning the market gaps open and stuff. You're not there. It's a very sad commentary. At minus 97, you could literally buy options three weeks out, two weeks out, and just not look at the market. Till it gets to the levels that I'm showing it's going to get to. 
Now it's gone from minus 97, which was uh, two week, two days ago, to minus 52. What did I just read to you guys in simple English? It is troughed. The trough is being validated by a reversal on the full stochastics. It is starting for a MACD, which is starting to go positive now. If you, if you, if you, if you, some of you, I mean, I wear uh, computer glasses, powered glasses, so I'm sure some of you can see that that the that the MACD is starting to shrink. When MACD start to shrink, they go positive at least for a couple of days, like this. Now this MACD was this was deeper, 118. This is when everybody just all the big institutions just sold out. This time, even though the McClellan oscillator meant to minus 97. If you look at the depth of the MACD, it's just remained slightly lower, similar to what it was just in September. So what does that tell you? That told you that big institutions didn't really sell out. It's a lot of the smaller hedge funds and stuff that blew up. A lot of it came from EM, emerging market. A lot of it came from Chinese funds, which were blowing up. So what it's telling you is a very powerful positive divergence. This is for serious traders, by the way. Not for the five minute trader, guys. All right. So, bottom line is that this 90, minus 97, you got down to the same levels, but you had a positive divergence on the actual, uh, 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 actual M uh, MACDs. But we got deep oversold, just like February. Except on February, we were a lot, you know, we were a lot lower than we are right now, weren't we? Sure, we were on the indices. So there's a lot of things just building up. Now, let me just remind you what I just read to you. I'm sure some of you have already forgotten. Is this line troughs after a lower trending McClellan oscillator? I should say a lower trending crossover of the McClellan oscillator can be a signal of a bullish reversal, which will show the trend line increasing again towards zero. Simple English the McClellan oscillator went from minus 97 to minus 53 today, despite the fact that everyone was freaking out and selling everything. And it is going to climb towards zero, or at least to the pivot, which is 22. And if it climbs towards zero, the market will go to that 2820 level. End of story. Next one, final one. Okay, the good old SPX 533 has not proven us wrong. Yes, it can be delayed by a day, two days and stuff. I've been using this for years. This is a directional bias chart, okay? And by the way, do save a pet because that'll make you a better human being. Anyone who doesn't have a cat or a dog, and especially a rescued one, really needs to do it just for their own sanity. It makes you a better trader, by the way. We have five. Serge is asking, is that a momentum indicator? I suggest something, Serge. Go to Wikipedia, Wikipedia, and I'm sorry, what am I saying Wikipedia? Investopedia, where I showed you the definition, and read up. Yes, it is a momentum indicator, but to get the exact definitions of understanding, because it looks like you're very new to technical analysis. Anyway, when I talk to you tomorrow, I'm going to give you some really solid pointers on how you can refresh and learn a little bit more. Yes, it is. So coming back to the pets save an animal you save a life stop going to a, to the store and buying a puppy mill uh, uh thing look at my dogs they look like show dogs they were all dying when we got them all right let's move on so bottom line is that um that this is turning that's all i gotta say when this turns it turns it doesn't mean every day is going to be an update but a week from now and I don't need to be complimented. I don't need to be like, you were right, Frank. I've heard that way too many times. It doesn't do anything. Why don't you tell yourself that you were right for a change? When the stoves turn, when the stochastics turn, you need to be in swing trades. You need not to look at everything that's going on. My job is to look at everything that's happening in the market. But if you want a powerful swing trade going out where we reach those levels that I told you we're going to reach, you better respect these things you're looking at. Every single time that the stochastics have turned on the swing 533, we have had a multi-day rally, which comes from nowhere. And this time, 
oh, Lord, are we oversold? We're at minus 20 on the MACD. We're minus 30 on the MACD here. Can we slip and slide a little bit more? Sure. What I would like to see is the MACD bars start to shrink. That is the first sign that you can jam. You can pedal to the metal. Don't have to go ballistic on the initial buys. Just buy, buy a little bit more. Then you step on the gas hard as you start to see these candles turn into hollow white candles. That's when you step hard. You take a little profit, roll out the profits, I mean, roll out the strikes more, and you keep on going higher. That's all I got to say, guys. I'm not taking any questions tonight because there's a lot of things you, need, you guys need to digest in between adopting a beautiful dog. All right? Or a cat. It's just serious stuff I explained to you guys. I do not. I refuse to be at this stage of the market on all these extreme conditions that I've shown you guys. Oh, let me show you the NQ before I forget. Then I'll make my closing statement. There's your NQ. So everybody's skimming and shouting like, oh my God, Adobe's up $13 after hours because they're, they just basically even put, put, they issued an upside guidance. It wasn't even their earnings. And this is Adobe that some of these analysts were pissing on about. They're pissing on a, a Apple. Oh, Apple's going to miss that. Same old crap over and over again. This is your NQ. Look at first glance. First glance, when you look at this chart, the real dogmatic, mentally, and I respect it, because it takes bears and bulls to, 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 to win the game of, 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 of trading. Bulls generally win because the history of the stock market has been a bullish one. The history of life has been a bullish one, or else we'd all be dead right now. So bottom line is that, uh, but if you, but, but if, if, a, if a, I don't see how a normal person who is uh, trying to be like neutral, nobody's neutral, everyone's got a bias, and obviously, can look at this going all the way back to last November and say that this is a really bearish chart. Yes, it's a bearish chart if you break below this. This is the actual NQs, the NASDAQ index futures. It is exactly the same as what it did here, what it did here, violated the 150-day, retested this white line here, which is the 200-day right here, almost did here. This white, two white lines are obviously my channels, but I'm talking about this line here. That's the 200-day. 200, fighting between the 250 before it moved higher, at least to reach, retest the back end of this 34 and the 50 day moving average, which means all those little babies that we trade are going to be up three, four, five percent, at least three percent, four percent. What's three percent on Amazon? Three percent on Amazon is basically about sixty dollars. This is cooperating, this is cooperating. The McLaren oscillator got down to an unbelievable low. When we bought the first dip and the market opened, you know, went up 600 points from there just last week. We're down minus 296. I mean, what are we th you guys thinking about? That's it. So on a final note, I'll tell you guys this. I think on a longer term basis, the markets have, in my opinion, peaked at the levels that we saw. Based on the monthly charts that I'm looking at. Right? And let's take a look at the monthly. Well, this is still bullish. I mean, this is bullish off this level here, minor candle developing, but the this is still a weekly. But on the monthly that I showed you, but that's monthly. I'm not a hedge fund manager. I'm not a mutual fund manager. I'm not, tra I'm not managing billions of dollars. So, uh, and I'm not managing multi hundred millions of dollars. So I'm not really concerned what the market's going to do a year from now. Neither are you guys, to be honest with you. Okay, so let's focus on the intermediate and short term. And the intermediate term picture says reflex bounce. Short term picture says reflex bounce. So I am not going to miss out on these, on those type of reflex, powerful, multi-day, multi-day in these cases because things happen so fast, type of bounces and focus on trading something five minutes a day and miss out on the bigger, bigger moves. That's just my opinion. On that note, guys, thank you for listening. Um, I know today's session, now I'm going to ask you, I know it was helpful. And Serge, join us uh, as a real member. You're going to get a lot more out of, you know, you just heard a sampling of things here. We have amateur traders. We have 
uh, uh, moderate traders and we have very advanced traders in our group. And everyone is here to help. But in order for you to do that search, this is our new member, I mean, new free trial member from uh, uh, from uh, Quebec. Um, beautiful, absolutely gorgeous part of, of Canada. Um, you cannot judge yourself. This is heavy duty stuff, okay? This is not something you learn in one day. But you can just take the trades and just do it. Just follow the frigging arrows, like I say. Look at my charts and follow the arrows. But what I'm saying is that if you really want to move on to making consistent money going forward, you got to join as a member. And we are all here to help. And that's it. Your PL, what your profit and loss, what it's going to do within this one week free trial means nothing. It means nothing to you. Because you won't be able to maneuver things because you don't know the exact methods of how to do it. Maybe you're not reading the charts right. Maybe you're just getting too emotional, which most of most traders are. So that has no bearing on what your PL will look like a month from now, two months from now, if you stay with Clueless Safe Trading. On that note, God bless you all. See you guys tomorrow.